Welcome back, everyone. If you're just joining us, we are approaching the last stretch of our second day. Uh, coming up next, we have the presentation with Clo titled The Impact of 3D, How User Divers Diversity Propels Imagination and Opens New Frontiers for Virtual Fashion. That is being led by Emily McLeod, 3D designer of Clo Virtual Fashion. A CLO has a wide range of users from individuals to academics to enterprises. Being accessible to different industries has allowed them to gather more insight and develop to include a much wider audience. Emily will share with us how the diversity of their user base drives them and the 3D community forward. Emily, welcome to 3D Tech Fest. Take it Hello. away. Thanks so much. Thanks so much for that introduction. So hello everyone. Yes, I'm Emily. I work at Clo as a 3D designer. I'm coming to you from New York. So in this uh, conversation about diversity and, conclu and conclu inclusion, we've seen a lot of talk about especially creation of product and 3D assets for diverse audiences. But what about our users? What about the creators? And that's what I want to dig into today. What can we learn from our user base and especially our individual users? And what can they teach us about imagining about the future of Clo and about the future of design? So I want to start from actually where I made first contact with Clo, which was not through apparel. One of my classmates in my undergraduate class decided to teach herself marvelous design and created this verdant organic landscape with organic material that was made from patterns and fabric. And this application of patterning blew my mind. And it wouldn't be uh, the last time that would happen. One of many times my mind would be blown by the possibilities of 3D. It really sparked a fire in me. And I knew from that moment I had to learn Clo. Fast forward to not that long after having that thought, I started my job the first day as a 3D designer. Over the past three years, um, I've really started to pay close attention to what is out there and just realizing how much I didn't know, which is very exciting because that means I have so much to learn. I have had my imaginative fire stoked again and again by the 3D community. And that spark is what I want to share with you today. So first, let's flash back to the year 2009 and the origins of Clo, because the origins of Clo really rests with our user base and especially our individual users. So our founder, Jaden, was studying his PhD in computer science and created what would become the first iteration of Clo to help people design and create garments more easily. Our original 3D community was born in the cosplay community, those individual users paved the way for our first enterprise clients. So closed destiny was and always will be determined by the 3D community. And from day one, we have learned so much from our users and it's baked into the way that we operate. One of our core company values is being user focused, truly thinking and learning from the user perspective to create tools that facilitate that creativity. So in case you're tuning in for the first time and maybe aren't as familiar with Clo, Clo is a 3D software, it's all in one, specializing in true to life garment simulation. In Clo, you can accurately visualize fabric fit and silhouette basically as fast as you can imagine them. All of the steps needed to create your designs are designed to be in one place and to pivot to your ideal process. Most importantly, it's designed to unify the language that teams speak to each other, which I'll circle back to a little bit later. So let's start from a zoomed out perspective and look at where our communities live offline. And later we'll get out the microscope and look at specific user characteristics. So this is a map showing total monthly average users in the year 2021, so last year. The more blue or darker the color gets, that means there's more total monthly average users. And this shows us actually that Clo is being used in 108 countries by individuals, universities, and companies. So all of our user types are combined here. That's 55% or a little over half of the world's nations, which is amazing. 
In first place uh, with the highest total monthly average users is South Korea. Uh, second, third, and fourth place go to the United States, to China, and Germany. So what this shows us is that there's a really large geographical range of people using Clo. But what are specific factors that differentiate them? What can we learn about our users' learning identity and how that determines their success using 3D? So this is where we're getting our users in a little Petri dish, and we're going to take a look with our creative microscope. On the Americas team, we work with a pretty diverse range of learners. And so here I'm breaking down some characteristics that differentiate who we work with. So our first characteristic here up at the top is level of tech apprehensiveness. Even within one training group, large or small, this could range from someone who is born at the keyboard to someone who doesn't know the difference between a right and a left click. And it's part of my job as a 3D designer to adapt my teaching style and my explanations to meet learner types, regardless of where they sit on the spectrum. In the brands we work with, age range could be anywhere from college intern all the way through seasoned professional. In our individual user base, we've seen younger audiences engage with Clo and with our newest software, Ginny. We work with teams with a variety of level of patterning knowledge base. And what we regularly see in our enterprise clients is Clo gets used as a tool, especially to allow understanding between designers and seeing what their tech and pattern maker counterparts do on a normal basis. And as a result, we see a lot of increased empathy and especially more collaborative fittings as a result of that. In individual users, Clo could often be the first patterning experience, meaning that it's not only a place to create something, but also a way to learn an entirely new discipline. Our last and possibly most important differentiator and the most significant indicator to close success is avoidance of making mistakes. And that's what I want to dig into a little bit more. When teaching the software, one of the first exercises we do is to show what happens when gravity or simulation is turned on without the patterns being correctly arranged around the avatar. And because we still have momentum in the 3D window, everything comes together and smashes and creates this beautiful explosion that you see here. Due to the unlimited undos, we can easily undo this, although I personally think this is very aesthetically pleasing, not very conducive to accurate fitting. But this mentality of just trying something new to see what happens is what determines the success of a user and how far they'll get in their 3D journey. You learn exponentially more from mistakes than you do from successes. And we could argue that those mistakes, if you learn from them, aren't truly mistakes. Many of the most amazing creations I've seen have come from people who have probably made thousands of mistakes to get to that point. And especially if they're starting from the ground zero, learning patterning, that's going to be part of that learning process. Here at Clo, one of our leading values is to learn more by being less wrong. And making mistakes is a really big part of that. It can push us forward and encourage others to try something new they may not have thought about before. Because Clo allows lower access barriers to create a variety of categories and compresses a lot of the design process into one place, we see that our individual users tend to be much more ambitious about trying new things, about creating freely, and about making mistakes along the way. So if we see our individual users as this endless idea generator, the enterprise side is the engineer that brings those ideas into the real world. They obviously have considerations that individuals don't need to worry about, like production logistics and especially process scaling. So already we start to see the internet connectedness of these relationships and how that might relate to the growth and evolution of 3D fashion as a whole. All of these user groups cross-pollinate in this relaxed, uh, relational and collaborative ecosystem. They all work together to drive the industry forward aesthetically and spread diverse perspective and level of proficiency in 3D. We learn from our individual users through Discord, the forum, social media platforms, of course, Twitch streams, and an increasing number of democratized fashion platforms and marketplaces. 
individuals have consistently pushed the boundaries of what can be done in CLO and in 3D in general, which I will share more on a little bit later. Larger entities like fashion brands try their own version of what they're inspired by. They collaborate with freelancers to create their block libraries and of course artists to bring ideas and new categories into the production sphere. Our third major category of users is uh, academics. They comprise about a quarter of our client base here in the US. They obviously are tasked with teaching the new generation of designers who then flow into the individual and enterprise user pools. We have seen some amazing works by students who haven't even been using 3D that long. They don't necessarily know the rules of fashion, which means they are able to make discoveries without those self-imposed boundaries. CLO intersects at the middle of these user groups, and each user group has a unique considerations, which lead to a pretty diverse range of feature requests that we then prioritize, develop, and of course, release in new versions of the software. So this collaborative ecosystem is key to the growth of 3D as a discipline and keeps us at CLO and everyone learning from each other. Stagnation is the killer of innovation. And here we can see these relationships have a lot of potential to spark creativity and invention amongst one another. And this idea of breaking rules, of rewriting them and questioning them is what makes me so excited about CLO and 3D in general. While CLO was originally intended for use in apparel, we've seen some amazing and unconventional approaches to these categories we never thought to use it for. And calling back to that ecosystem of users I just shared, what is new and able to be done is pushed by individuals and then we see companies adapt and use that inspiration to onboard entirely new categories into 3D. So I want to share a couple of those stories with you now. So three years ago, I said, or we said at CLO, you couldn't use CLO for handbags. Individual users myth busted that one pretty quick for us. Not only were they able to show you were able to build a bag in 3D, but also the hardware to go along with it. And now we have a growing client base that are exclusively building bags, backpacks, equipment, and luxury handbags. For a long time, we asserted CLO could not be used for footwear. Again, proven wrong by users. Not only did they prove you could build shoes in CLO, but they proved out successful prototypes uh, and workflows to create those rapid prototypes. And in this case, we actually saw a user at a company take the initiative, experiment, and essentially pilot an entirely new category. Some of these free thinking individuals, obviously, are in companies, and this results in pushing the boundaries of what we deemed was possible. When I started at CLO, home goods was just coming into scope as a viable category. And during my time here, it has absolutely exploded. We have a healthy client base now dealing exclusively with home goods, including bedding, like you see here, home textiles, towels, and built environments to show how it all comes together. There's also more unconventional categories like pool floaties and hard goods like baby carriers that have also come onto the scene. And lastly, toys and toy clothing, a really interesting category. And the ability to express all of those really intricate textures and details is truly incredible. One of my main responsibilities as a 3D designer is to interpret client desire and aspiration into a viable workflow and features to facilitate it. We work as translators between what is possible and what could be possible. CLO doesn't stop you from making mistakes. The software and the industry changes when people try new things, fail, and try again. And here at CLO, we love a challenge, and we are consistently amazed by users who show their willingness to explore, their out-of-the-box thinking, and, of course, ability to question what could be. As CLO designers, we get a lot of input from all of these different user bases. And our goal is to convert our users' hardships and limitations into features. So I wanted to share um, a few different instances of this happening where that feedback has led to some pretty awesome features and platforms. 
So starting with 3D Style Line, our inspiration came from our client workflows. We saw that designers were really intimidated by starting to edit those patterns directly. So we wanted to create an approachable way for them to do that in the 3D window where the patterns were still linked in 2D. And of course, these can still be trued and edited by tech designers and pattern makers, but it allows designers to get involved at an earlier stage of the patterning process. In the case of parametric pattern, new and old clients would ask us, where can I put my spec sheet? Individual users would want a way to create blocks without that patterning background and know-how. And this resulted in the parametric pattern creator, which allows users to put in their body measurements and this results in a um, automatically generated bodice block. We wanted to create a place for people without any pattern knowledge could learn in a very gamified way and to, of course, participate in the metaverse in an accessible manner. Jenny allows for exactly this. Um, it allows them to learn about patterning in an easy way and create digital garments. And lastly, Connect is a marketplace where we want users to be able to connect with each other, upload their works, be able to see what another one another is creating, and of course, create a universally curated set of universally accessible assets that we all make and can access together. So if we step back and look at the big picture, how might increased accessibility in the 3D space affect the future of design? We can already see a ton of cross-pollination and learning, right, among all these different user types. And this can lead to a more interdisciplinary fashion industry. Outside influences that are traditionally kept separated, like gaming, are now coming up in new and novel ways, which is really exciting. And we can see, hopefully, that this will continue to increase as digitally created assets become more easily transferable among mediums. Open source marketplaces, like I mentioned earlier, are on the rise and really exploding. And that can help us to transition to a higher instance of made to order and mass customized models, which eliminate overstock and unnecessary waste. As job roles evolve and combine and the development of the metaverse matures, new job opportunities will continue to appear that require that multidisciplinary skill and mindset. Diverse user types and perspectives will be critical in being able to create these roles and forge innovative approaches to them. As I discussed, our individual users and free thinkers serve as a font of ideas that can be manifested later by brands. And this job we're rewriting is definitely a part of that. One of the most important and exciting influences that we've seen 3D have on the design process is the creation of a universal language. It has been eye-opening to go into these teams that were traditionally segmented and watch them learn actively from each other about patterning, about construction, about development and production, all in one place. When we go into companies to discuss the benefits of 3D, this is the most important feature of Clo. It allows teams to speak together and learn together in one voice. The creation and development process will continue to become more collaborative and fluid as more workflows phases can be combined and of course reimagined. User diversity is crucial to building the future that we envision. Facilitating non-discriminatory access is by everyone, especially marginalized identities into these spaces ensure that the imagination of the metaverse and Web3 space continue to be built upon open source, collaborative, and obviously most importantly, equitable value sets. As we continue to deepen our understanding of this technology, we must also be fierce in ensuring our meta worlds we build online don't negatively affect our communities and sustainability here in the real world. The new frontiers offered by diverse user perspective that we see now is just the beginning. And here at Clo, we truly cannot wait to see what our users create next. And of course, to continue to be a channel for manifesting our users' imagination. Um, so yeah, thank you so much everyone for tuning in and um, I hope you enjoy the rest of 3D Tech Fest.
so much to Emily. Answer those. That'll be great. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much.